and welcome to another episode of Bar. In today's video I will show you what are the basic things you need to know about AppSync, a GraphQL managed service from AWS. If you're interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> So it's the second video of a series of for AppSync. So in the first video, I link it in the description card. It was about basics of GraphQL. So if you don't know that, you should go and check it out and then come back here. This video is about AppSync, that is the managed GraphQL service from AWS. So we are going to go a little bit in the basics, what it is, what are the benefits, why we should use it, and how you can create some things using the AWS console. Let's get to it. So let's get started by the basics. What is AppSync? AppSync is a managed GraphQL service from AWS. It's quite new as it was launched in Rainbow 2017. AppSync automatically updates the data in the front end and in real time. And you can even use it for offline. Two things that you cannot do using REST APIs. There are many use cases for these kinds of solutions. You can use it for displaying alerts, for multiplayer games, chat applications, and document collaborations. Some of the benefits are that you can build very fast backends with GraphQL, as you don't need to define all the different endpoints. Remember the video that I did to introduce GraphQL, where I explained this. Also, when you use AppSync, it comes out of the box security. It lets you integrate automatically with AWS Cognito and with the AWS Identity Services. And you can set fine-grained permissions to different operations so you know who can access which part of the data. Also, AppSync allows you to combine multiple sources for your data. For example, you can use DynamoDB to find straight data from the tables, Lambda, to connect to other services or to manipulate the data that comes from some Dynamo table. Or you can also use Lambda to connect to an RDS, and then you have the ability to use Elasticsearch as well. AppSync also resolves automatically the conflicts between two or more customers performing an update in the same resource. So how this works? The first thing you're going to do is to create a schema. You will define a schema. You can use the graphic tool for it, or you can do just uh, how we are going to do it in the next video with code. Uh, there you will create all the queries and mutations and the types. Then you are going to connect the different parts of the schema to the different data sources. So as I say, Dynamo Tables, Elasticsearch and Lambda are the free available data sources. The client can make calls to the GraphQL to fetch data, make changes or subscribe to real-time updates from the data. Also. The client can work offline, so clients can do changes that will get updated when the client reconnects. So now let's go to the AWS console and do this on the console, how this works. And in the next video, we are going to do more or less the same thing, but just fully coded. So this is just for you to get an idea what we are building. So let's log in to our AWS account. If you don't have one, I have a video on how to create one. So go ahead, create an account and come back. AppSync has a lot of things included in the free tier, so you're going to get quite a lot of things from it when you get started with it. So now we are logged in and we can go to the AppSync service and we click on it. And there, if it's the first time you're in this page, you're going to see a little documentation, a little resources, and some articles where to get started, some use cases and things like that. So this will disappear after we create our first API. So let's create a new API and there we can put a name. We call it My Cities. We are doing a small API with a custom schema. So we are creating that from scratch. We are going to get a white schema. And then when you create that API, you will get the API URL. That's what you're going to connect from your client. And in this case, as we are using an API key to authenticate, you're going to get an API key. We are going to see this authentication in the next video in a little bit more detail. If you move down, then you can see a little bit of information and then you can see get different starter apps for different systems like iOS, Android Web and React Native. And you can also get the schema. In this case, it's empty schema. So, But it's good when you are working with a front end 
a company or different developer that you can share the schema and you both can work with this schema. And then if we go to settings, as I said, you can change the different authorization type. Now is the API key, but you have others. For now, we are not touching this. In the schema, let's clean up all this commented thing and let's put up our schema. That is a pretty simple type of the type city and a query to fetch one city bad ID. So this is pretty straightforward. So now we save it. And when we save it, after everything is completed, we have a button on the top that says create resources. And that will create us the Dynamo tables, for example, in this case, everything automatically. So we don't need to do it ourselves. So if we press create resources, we can see first that we don't have any data sources in this API. So we click create resources. We select the type, the city. And this will auto generate the tables for us. So we don't need to go and create it. We can have different sort keys and our indexes, and then it will add all this information to our schema and we'll let it go. It will allow us to get one city and list all the cities and update the city and delete the city and blah, blah, blah. And then also it has all the description for real time that we are not going to cover in this video. But if you would like to see some real time, stuff let me know in the comments box below i can make videos about it so when we create save then we see that the schema change to the new schema with everything so now we can see that there's a lot of things and if we go to the data types column we can see that there is a lot of things that are connected to some table good so now we can go to the queries and try some queries so let's remove everything and let's try a basic query to add a city to our database that was created automatically by the schema. So if we create a new city, name Montevideo and country Uruguay with ID1, we run it and it says that it created it. So we can go to data sources and verify that. If we click there, we can see that there is one item in this Dynamo table. If we go back, now we can go and try to fetch this table, this city. So we are going to use the fetch city thingy that we have created. So we query that and when we play it, oops, null, how is that possible? So we go back to our schema and we can see in the data types that if we go down to query, the fetch city is not attached to anything. So if we click attach, then we can select the table and this will create the request and the response mappings for us. This is very simple. It just finds with ID in the Dynamo table and it returns that. So it returns one single item, but you have different options. So that's pretty neat. When we go back to the queries and we run that query, now we will get the city we were looking for. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you like it, give a big thumbs up. And if you have any questions, comments, or things you would like to see from AppSync, leave them in the comment box below. I like to make videos that you like watching. And remember to subscribe because the next video is how to build a backend using AppSync and a serverless framework, a fully, whatever we did today with the console, but fully code based. You might be interested in knowing how to do that. Around here, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!